Liquidity, which has sold since the global financial crisis, has not been recovered in a timely manner. The addition of money released by COVID-19 stimulate demand. The collapse of the supply chain brought about by the coronavirus and the consequent decrease in supply also had an effect. The unexpected Russo-Ukraine war caused the prices of essential commodities such as energy, raw materials, and food to skyrocket. The 9% inflation rate in the United States is almost terrifying in light of the experience of the past decade when it did not exceed the 3% level. The same is true in Europe. The Fed is prioritizing slowing inflation over recession concerns and the burden on high debt countries. The fact that the monetary release eventually stimulates demand and leads to inflation is a basic level of economics. Outstanding experts took this fact lightly. Perhaps they were too optimistic about the situation. The central bank is belatedly admitting each mistake and tightening the lanes of austerity. The trend of rising price is still scary. As much the target of monetary policy will also focus on inflation for a considerable period of time. Fears of a global economic recession are rising as the real economy slows not only in the United States but also in Europe and Asia. The U.S. Federal Reserve, which recently took three consecutive giant steps, announced an additional 1.25 percentage points increase in interest rate by the end of this year, causing a sharp rise in the dollar, uh, plunge in the stock market, and a sharp decline in oil prices. Giant step is a 0.75 percentage points increase in the benchmark interest rate. I fear that the economy will enter a phase of recession after high inflation is growing, is growing. Major international organizations are raising global inflation forecasts, lowering growth rate one after another, and sending a message warning a recession. The economic recovery is expected to be delayed for a considerable period of time due to geopolitical risks such as the Russia-Ukraine war and monetary tightening policies of major countries. As the U.S. dollar strengthened due to the tightening of the Federal Reserve, it is causing bad news such as capital outflows and rising import prices in each country. On September 23rd, the British government announced a large-scale tax cut and fears of worsening inflation. The dollar found exchange rate plunged to 1.08 for dollars during the day. The pound's lowest value since 1985. The euro also fell 1.59%. In particular, U.S. austerity measures are accelerating the pace of economic downturn in conjunction with the energy shortage caused by the Ukraine war. The law of increasing returns 
has been applied to the development of automation technology. The development of IT gave birth to the new Goldilocks mid of high gross low price. However, another phenomenon called jobless growth has occurred. The employment situation has worsened since 2008 as the financial crisis overlapped. During the corona crisis, the previous high growth low price to low growth high price between growth and inflation and the jobless recovery to jobful downturn between employment and growth it was. At this year's sectional meeting, the topic of an avoid revision to inflation marketing through attention. If inflation targeting was maintained at the current 2% amid the tremor between gross employment and inflation, concerns about the interest rate hikes and the economic recession overlapped, which could have a major negative impact on the stock market. On the other hand, if the rate is raised to 4%, both buttons will be eased and this could be a big boom. The economic slowdown in Asia is also not serious. Korea's exports for 20 days this month fell 8.7% compared to the same period last year. Taiwan's August export growth rate was the lowest in more than two years. China's export growth rate, which recorded 18% year-on-year in July, also slowed significantly to 7.1% in August. The Organization for Economic Cooperation Development lowered the global economic growth rate for next year by 0.6 percentage points from the previous 2.8% to 2.2% in the Interim Economic Outlook released on September 26. The International Monetary Fund also lowered its global economic growth forecast for next year from 3.6% to 2.9%. On the same day, the OECD revised Korea's growth forecast for next year to 2.2 percent, 0.3 percentage points lower than the previous 2.5 percent. The International Monetary Fund also lowered its growth forecast for Korea's from 2.3 percent this year to 0.1 percent next year. The dollar has surged this year as the U.S. Federal Reserve aggressively reduces interest rates. The dollar index, which measures the value of the dollar against the major basket currencies, is up 14% this year. JP Morgan sees the dollar continuing to rise as investors continue to grapple with recession fears. They predicted that interest rate will not peak until global interest rates stabilize. The dollar is unlikely to peak in the near term as growth is Europe and China is expected to slow significantly. They said adding that the strength of the dollar will continue to act as a headwind for U.S. stocks. As the price of U.S. products becomes too expensive, it is expected that overseas sales of companies doing business abroad will decrease. 
They estimated that operating profit per share of S&P 500 companies would decline by 60 cents due to the sharp rise in the dollar. A stronger dollar will curb inflation, but will have mixed effects on the U.S. economy as the trade deficit widens, dragging down real economic growth. For U.S. investors, it will exacerbate concerns over the performance of the S&P 500 and will act as a drag on global stock returns. He also predicted that the dollar would not peak until the policy rate differential between the Fed and the other central bank narrowed. The Fed has said it will raise rates until inflation is certain to subside. Jeremy Siegel, a professor at the Watton School at the University of Pennsylvania, told CNBC the Fed did not see inflation when commodity prices rose rapidly last year, but now when prices are falling, they insist on keeping it tight until next year. It is one of the biggest policy mistakes.